prepared today because I am interviewing Spencer Breslin, someone I watched as a little kid growing up, and now in my first year of college, in three weeks, I got a response from him, and it's it's making me super excited. So again, very honored that I'm going to be talking to you today. Well, honored Thank to be here. Thank you very much. All right, so room right now, so I'm honored to be here. All right, so okay. My first question that I always ask everybody, depending on whoever I meet, is simply, what is your favorite movie and why? Uh, my favorite movie, this might sound really pretentious, I don't know, but my favorite movie of all time is 2001 A Space Odyssey. No, definitely not. I mean, I, I, I don't know, I, I feel like, uh, I, okay, so my, I have an older brother who, uh, Ryan, seven years Ryan. older than me. Yeah, Ryan Breslin. Which, uh, also, if you don't mind me asking, or uh, saying, uh, my little brother, he was two years old when Zoom came out, so he, I don't know if he really knows who you are, but he yep. is a huge fan of Newsies. So he knows of Ryan Breslin because of that. And he was, he was like, he got really excited that I'm interviewing the brother. And I'm like, well, Peter, I'm, I'm interviewing Spencer. I'm more excited about that. But no, he was, he was very excited. What's, He's what's like, really interesting is that there were people who were born in 2003. That's weird. Yeah. That's trippy to me. <laughs> that's really weird. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, that's weird. So, I, uh, continue with 2001? Oh, yeah, 2001. That's right. Yeah, so... He showed that to me uh, when I, I think he showed it to me when I was nine, which I don't really understand why he did that, and I hated it because it was really boring uh, for a nine-year-old. Yeah. Uh, all I wanted to do was watch WWF, and I mean, that's pretty much all I still want to do in life. <laughs> um, you know, so I was uh, sitting there with my Mankind action figure, and uh, <laughs> you know, uh, didn't really get it, and then I started watching it uh, again when I was 13 and couldn't look away. Uh, not sure I really got it then either. Not sure I even get it now because um, mm -hmm. I think it's kind of – what's great about that movie and a lot of Kubrick stuff is just the amount of times you can rewatch it and still discover something new is pretty, uh, pretty mind-blowing, I guess. Um, it's also really tough for me to say like what my favorite movie of all time would be. Mm -hmm. um, just because there's so many that, that I like for different reasons and different moods, kind of like, you know, asking what your favorite record is. I think it depends on where you're at in your mm -hmm. life and what, you know, where you're at in your day, yeah. honestly. Um, but 2001's been, you know, pretty high up there for, so, I guess, I don't know, since Zoom. Actually, I watched it, when I rewatched it, it was during the filming of Zoom. Oh, really? Wow. Uh, in Toronto, I rewatched it, oh, and wow. I liked it. And yeah. uh, I don't know if you've seen this, but this is my all-time favorite movie. Have you seen uh, Eight and a Half by Federico oh, Fellini? Of course. I love this movie. Of course. Yeah, it's especially as a filmmaker, it's I totally connect to that character. It's just like it's amazing. It's uh, a, did you ever see what was the what was the movie that came out? I don't even remember when it came out. Um, sometime in the past ten years, that was. I want to say I, I I know I'm going to screw this up. I want to say it was sort of like an homage to Eight and a Half. It was, was, it, was, it, was oh, it was oh the Great Beauty Snake. The Great Beauty. No, it was I got to it was uh it was a musical. Um oh nine nine thank you. Actually, it's go. funny you say that because I'm a movie critic and I haven't reviewed movies on YouTube for so long. So this this Zoom analyze review is going to be my first review that kind of coming back, and I actually. Like, my first video I want to post on my new channel is actually an homage to the, the song that Daniel Day Lewis sings in that movie because, you know, I want to, like, say I want to return and I want to do this, like, kind of big thing. And uh, so I wrote, I wrote the lyrics down for, like, just a, a parody of that song. And uh, I'm planning on doing that because I love Excellent. it. Excellent. Huge musical fan. I don't know if you've heard the musical Chess, but I'm wearing a shirt of it right now. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's a great it. shirt. All right. Great. So next one is, um, what made you get into the business? As um, well, um, you know, I owed a lot of money to some loan sharks back in New York, and uh, no, I, what happened was I. Um, so sometimes, and this is a lot less creepy than it sounds. Sometimes <laughs> um, agencies, like youth talent agencies, will send scouts out, especially in New York and LA, like big, <laughs> excuse me, metropolitan areas like that, too. Right. You know, playground schools, sometimes they'll have seminars, sometimes they'll just send scouts out to uh, kind of look for the weirdest kids who, like, are the most outgoing for their age. Um, okay. And I was a really, really bad baby, like a bad toddler who was always just kind of destroying shit. Uh, can I say 
can I curse it? Or, uh, <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't care. Why not? <laughs> always destroying stuff around the house, um, which they loved. I mean, the talent scouts loved because it was just like I had so much energy. And uh, they went up to my mom and said, hey, you know, do you, do you think he'd be interested in doing this? And, you know, she was like, I don't know, he's three years old. I don't know if he's interested in doing anything. Um, but she let me try it out. And so I started doing commercials in New York and um, really enjoyed it. Um, and it also was great for my parents because I quickly realized, you know, if I didn't kind of behave properly, then I wouldn't get to keep doing it because people would say, fuck this kid, he's terrible. Uh, <laughs> terrible three-year-old, terrible three-year-old. Um, well, then, then didn't you got casted in uh, The Kid. From that, this? You got casted in The Kid with Bruce Willis from this. Or? Yeah, that was, I started when I was three, and that uh, that movie happened in, uh, I was seven. Yeah. yeah, and was that like your big break, I would assume? Yeah, that was the yeah. first big movie that I, uh, that I did, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool, kind of a cool, like, first, thing to do. Um, looking back on it, I'm like, wow, I don't really think I appreciated it mm -hmm. uh, as much, like, you know, because yeah. I was 11. But, you know, looking back, it's awesome. All right. Uh, who was, your, like, your main influence? Why, like, exactly, did you, like, watch anybody in particular and said you want to, you know, do what he's doing? Is there any influences? Or even, like, influences on the music world, for example? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, acting-wise, it's, it's tough. I kind of tried to Stay away from, I, I mean, there were always filmmakers that I really admired. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we already talked about Kubrick, uh, big Woody Allen fan. I mean, oh, uh, love, love Annie Hall. Yeah, oh, yeah, uh, Annie Hall, Manhattan, uh, Hannah and her sisters, great movies. Um, you know, I, for filmmaking, it's it's really tough because I kind of wanted to just do my own thing and not be too self, which is tough anyway, but um. <laughs> You know, so, so there was no one that I really tried to emulate. I mean, there were always performances that I really admired. Um, but when it gets down to it, I, I mean, I don't really know how to do any of this anyway. I just kind of go out and do it. Um, right. And I think that's the way I kind of like to keep it. Uh, just, you know, I got my own shit that I do, I guess. Um, you know, not to say, like, just, I don't know. It's, it's tough. I try to stay out of that stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. For music, I mean, I guess I, I got into punk rock in high school. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, there's actually a really great filmmaker who lives, lived, I don't live there anymore, but in New York in the building I grew up in, um, who made a, he's made so many great documentaries, um, and he made this movie called American Hardcore, mm -hmm. and that came out in 2006, um, and he came downstairs to our apartment, rang the bell and said, hey, you know, uh, I know Spencer's kind of getting into music, so maybe he'll like this movie that I made and here's a copy of the soundtrack and it was all yeah. these great punk rock bands that I'd never heard and so mm -hmm. I immediately latched onto that and started playing in as many bands as possible. Um, and and you know, you, that kind of you, well, like, what instruments do you play? Like, um, I, you can see some of them. I play, I got a lot of guitars. Mm -hmm. um, oh man, I'm restricted here. I got a lot of guitars, uh, piano, bass, um, and I do music production here and I'm actually yeah. You can't see it, but behind the computer, there's like a whole bunch of recording stuff right. that I use every day. <laughs> I'm trying to do a musical right now. I'm trying to learn how to do electronic music for that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because it's like I'm trying to make a new style. Like, you know, everyone's copying off of what's his name, uh, the normal Miranda with hip hop and everything. I'm trying to do like, right. ele like electronic, see what that would do. Something about Wall Street, because that's like something I'm interested in. All right. Oh, yeah. So, next one is. What was it like being like seven and being in these huge movies, being a child actor? What was it like being in these big movies feeling? I don't know. I mean, I think the cool thing about, uh, I guess uh, this, this question, because my answer will kind of veer off a bit. You know, I grew up in New York and I think that was kind of helpful in helping me maintain some sort of kind of innocence or, you know, it kind of kept me naive a bit to, you know, how big some of that stuff was, which mm -hmm. is cool because in New York, like, not every other kid you see or every other person you meet is yeah. working in show business right. or is an actor or, you know, wanting to be a producer, to, you know, yada, yada. Um, and honestly, the way I was raised, you know, my, my parents didn't really make a big deal out of it. They were kind of like, hey, this is something you do for fun. Um, 
you know, your father and I still support the family. Like, this is not a job for you. This is something you do for fun for as long as you want. And when you're done on set for the day, you know, it's Little League and this and that. And so I don't think it ever really occurred to me how big it was. I think it was just kind of normal. Um, and looking back on it, I mean, it's totally not normal and <laughs> totally crazy and cool. Um, no family, but I think it? kind of it was good as a kid is just to not be super aware of that. Um, yeah. You know, you want to... I don't know. It, it just felt normal and, and just really fun. Did you get like recognized a lot, or what's that? Did you get recognized like on the street or anything? A few times? Or? Yeah, a lot, a lot. Um, when the kid came out and that whole run of you know cat and hat and stuff like that. And now it's been yeah. sort of like by people our age, I guess, who who know who are like, Oh shit! It's like you know. Oh fuck! Like oh, you know, like the, <laughs> like to that, and then you know, I'll talk to them and. Um, it's, it's weird. Like, I guess we all kind of grew up together, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. And your whole family was in the business as well. So it was like, but what was it? The one, when you and, uh, Abigail went on Jared, or not Jared Leto, um, <laughs> Jay yeah, Leno. The, the Jay show Leto. Jared Leto, the lesser known late night program. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. In full Joker makeup. No, uh, no, the one where they're like, act like brother and sister. Late night band. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Next one, uh, what was your favorite role or movie that you've ever done? Or so far? Uh, um, there's something I liked about each of them, but I'd say in terms of just like pushing myself as an actor, um, in terms of comedy and physical comedy and all, all that kind of stuff and learning just so much about comedy, it was a movie called Harold that was a really oh, small right. movie. I do know of it though. Cause What's that? I, I do know of it, yeah. The one where that, that one I really liked. That one, yeah, that, I had to shave my head for it, um, mm -hmm. which was great because people were so uncomfortable to ask me what was going on with my haircut because I was 14. Um, <laughs> I did it. So I, I wore well, that's that that's I mean, The writer and director of that movie, T. Sean Shannon, is kind of a legend in the comedy writing field, the SNL, The Tonight Show, yeah. with Jay Leno, not Jared Leto. Um, <laughs> you know, and so many SNL alum were in it. Um, you know, Chris Parnell, Rachel Dratch, you got, you know, Colin Quinn, Fred Willard, Dave Attell was just loaded with all these, fuck man, that movie is just stacked with all these great comedians. And that one was sort of like, I kind of realized how cool that was. I was 14, 15. Um, you also and had, that uh, was like, oh, this is cool. Like, I just better shut up and learn, mm -hmm. you know? You also had like Cuba Gooding Jr. in that and uh, <laughs> Nikki Blonsky, who was just off of Hairspray. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Yeah. And, uh. So. It was cool. We, we, you know, we filmed it, that one was fun too because we got to film it out on Long Island. Uh, I grew up in the city, so I have beef with Long Island. Not really, but um, <laughs> you know, I hate the Islanders. But it was cool because I mean, we were filming in Nikki's hometown. Like she grew up in the town on Long Island that we were filming the movie on, and I got to drive twenty minutes from home every day to work, which is pretty rare in this business. Um, I mean, that was just such a great experience because it was made for no money, and everyone really wanted to be there. And it was a blast. That's, that's nice. you know, I love that movie. Awesome. I should check it out then. Been yeah, to... I recommend it. If you can find a copy, I, I can send could. you one probably if you want. Yeah. <laughs> well, that'd be amazing. No. All right. Just, just well, we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to transition into the questions involving the movie Zoom, uh, the ones that I've always had <laughs> about this movie. Let's see what I can do. Yeah, let's see how many I can answer. Okay. Just like this hasn't been a movie that I saw back in two thousand six and or two thousand seven, and I just it always stayed in my mind for some reason. Was it two thousand six or two thousand seven? Two thousand six. It was August eleventh, two thousand six, with the release date. Shit. There you go. Well, yeah, that's right. We filmed it in 05. Yeah. yeah sorry. And, go ahead. Yeah. So it was like it's always been in my mind for some reason, and I don't know why. But it was just like I watched it again recently, and then this, really? this whole thing started up. I haven't seen it since it came out. Oh really? Oh, no, wow. I, I I have not seen it since it came out. Oh. Wow. All right, so the, the first one question is, did you ever read the original book by Jason Lepka? I, I think it was. I don't think I ever did. I don't think I could ever find a copy, and I don't think, mm -hmm. maybe production sent me one. I, I don't remember. I don't think they did, because I wanted to read it, and I was mm -hmm. like, oh, it's based off a comic. This should be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, I never read it, yeah. I was going to actually, my sub question, if you did, I was going to actually ask you how big of a part was Tucker in that story, was it like originally created or anything, but I was, you know, whatever. So, no idea. What was the audition process like when you auditioned for this movie? What was it like? That one sort of, 
That one was a weird one. That one was one of those rare ones where I just kind of ended up in the movie because I I'd been working with Tim Allen a lot. Um, that, that's a future question, FYI. But we'll get. To yeah, that. we've done like a hundred <laughs> movies by that point right now. But um, no, we did Santa Claus two, and then Shaggy Dog. Uh, Shaggy Dog was next, and then Zoom, and then Santa Claus three. So this was yeah. our third movie in like three years, two, two right. years, three years, something like that. To, Three mm-hmm. years together. Um, More, yeah, something like that. We filmed Santa Claus 2 and 02. Yeah. Um, so that one just sort of like, I think just like, it just happened. I guess like people are like, oh, he yeah, asked Tim Allen and Spencer Breslin. That's like the only thing that can happen now. Um, no, but I mean, that was cool. I was so stoked to work with him again. He's he's kind of a, like a personal hero uh, of mine. Um, I think so I told that wouldn't happen. Someone texted me on my computer. So. Oh. It happens. Next, read it on the air, unless it's really bad. No, I just, it was my roommate just letting him know uh, I'm interviewing you right now, and he just said, okay. What's up, Ryan? <laughs> no, my other one. I have, I live with three other guys in a room. Okay, cool. Yeah. What's up, not Ryan? Or yo? Ryan's in the other room. He's just asleep. Hello to Ryan and the not Ryans and all the roommates. I am sh- Actually, yeah. the one who texted me, actually, it's funny you say this, because the other day we're sitting in class, and we had to do a project based on, we had to write or draw a cover for a book, like any book we wanted to. And I think someone in our class actually was considering doing Cat in the Hat, and my roommate, Xavier, started saying how much he loved this movie. Like, he's like, oh my god, I love that movie, I've always, you know, been a fan of it. And I'm just like, you know I'm interviewing the kid from that movie, right? And he just sat there and he goes, what? <laughs> he's like, that's him? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he was, he was really excited for I was like, that's awesome. So... All right. That movie um, turned out weird, man. Like that movie, I like everyone fucking hated Cat in the Hat when it came out because it wasn't super faithful to the book. Like, and I not- and I was kind of like, all right, look, this is a weird movie. It's cool. And I and I thought to myself, you know, another ten or fifteen years, like this movie, people are going to realize how weird it was, and they're going to like it, and it's going to become sort of a weird thing where maybe it's going to be partially an ironic enjoyment of it, but there's also going to be people who get like. How like beautiful looking that movie is too. Like oh, yeah, Bo was the director. That. He was the production designer right. for like all the classic Tim Burton movies. And Barry um, Sonnenfeld, right? Like Ben in Black and all yeah, that stuff. And yeah, it's a beautiful movie. Yeah. And uh, and now it's like a meme. Yeah, I mean like, the whole like, like the get it, tagged in fifty times a day, <laughs> uh, and I get tagged in occasionally. <laughs> and it's weird. It's kind of cool to see that movie like get its weird internet moment. I don't even know. No, nice. it's meme or, my friend Mason uh, actually has been said he he looks like you from that movie. So he actually just texted me the other day. And he's like, someone just told me I looked like Spencer Breslin from Cat in the Hat. And I was just like, funny you say that. And I sent him the tweet. We got to go do a doppelganger thing where we both wear the uh, orange shirt around your school. And just <laughs> that would be amazing. And ask, like, which way gym class is. <laughs> like, gym class, we're in college, man. Uh, <laughs> You know, and we'll just play it totally straight and totally, like, <laughs> net pan. I think that'd be fun. That'd be amazing. Oh, my God. All right. Now, this is the one. It's sidetracked uh, really easily. Single. This is the one question that I'm most excited to ask you, and I'm Uh-oh. sorry if this is awkward or not. Please describe in as bi- big detail as you can what it was like on the day of the pool scene. I This is the scene I don't understand. I know. It's probably awkward. I know. I mean, it, there's nothing to understand. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah, I actually... The, again, this is... We did that during reshoots. What? We did that during reshoots. So we, oh, really? we had principal <laughs> photography up in Canada, and then... What was it? Uh, three months later, something like that, early 2006, we did reshoots in L.A., um, and they did some sort of weird fucking CGI on my stomach where it was just... Boom, and... Uh, I don't think I I wore a fat suit for the whole movie, um, which was weird because I don't get why they did that. If the character, if the point of the character is that he blows up to a huge size, I feel like it would have been funnier to go from like a more. I, I don't understand. I don't understand why that was necessary. Yeah, I just I think just like comedy wise, but you know whatever. That I mean, it that was doesn't funny, make sense. It was really uncomfortable to wear too because it was summertime in Toronto and Hot. really humid. Mm-hmm. Like, also, like, you know, I can't really complain because I was getting paid money to act, so, like, I should shut up. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not that uncomfortable. But, uh, yeah, I don't understand that scene, man. It was weird. I, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, and I tell you that I've been analyzing this movie, and I'm actually not lying. I've actually done frame for frame for that scene just because I'm watching all the reactions. And they're so interesting because 
the first when it happens, you jump off and everything. You look at the kids, and then there's one kid who's just not reacting at all. He's just sitting yeah. there smiling, and he just looks down like he knows his doom's gonna come upon him. But you know, all the other kids are looking at it like it's fucking Hiroshima. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, and then it happens, and all the water's gone and everything. And then that. what's up? I'm pulling up an image of that just to refresh me. Wow, yeah, it's weird. It just looks like two. It looks like a nutsack in a swimsuit. <laughs> That's what it looks like. That's, it looks like I like my like you know. It, it just looks like a giant nutsack monster. That's kind of creepy. It's like Pom Poco. It's, it's like a chill. Yeah, that's fucked up. Uh, okay, cool. There we go. I didn't. I, I didn't need to see that again. But no. I just curiosity got the best of me. I don't understand. Like also, but like in terms of character, what does that like? Because it's like I don't understand. Could he control it? Could he not? Was he wanting to do? I like it's. I just don't understand that scene in terms well, he of... Could control it. He was really embarrassed by it. According to what I remember, he was just like, you know, it's like a kid like, oh, no, I crap my pants. You know, like, I, <laughs> you know, kind of, kind of that, not to be gross, but kind yeah, of that yeah, type. Yeah, no. uh, yeah. uh -huh. You know, Ball had some of those nights where he drank too much and that's happened, so let's not pretend it. Um, but, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it doesn't make sense, but he was definitely embarrassed by it. He right. was very shy. It got bullied a lot. Yeah. And what was your re reaction to once Peter Hewitt came up to you and was like, this is what's going to happen? Were you just like, what? <laughs> like, how did what, you feel? Like, Oh, uh, I mean, I think by that point, like, we'd already done the whole movie, so I was just kind of like, yeah, man, what do like, I, the thing is, that movie, uh, is like, it turned so differently than I think anyone thought it would, like. That was, that's a future question I have, because yeah. when you watch the movie, it's like, literally like 60% montages. That's literally the movie, and it's... And it's 40% Smash Mouth. <laughs> well, Smash Mouth has a place in my heart, just because. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah. You, you, Did you get to meet the guys, though, from Smash Mouth? No. No? Unfortunate. They, they, were, they were chill with Guy Fieri, so they couldn't, you know, they couldn't make it. Is he, you know, what's the whole story with Guy Fieri? Is he, like, in the... He's not in the band, is he? Or did he produce it? I don't even, I don't even know, because they, they said he has something to do with it. Smash Mouth... Oh, you did. know, human form, I think. Like, he's just, like, the idea. He, he, no, I don't know. They're best friends, and it makes perfect sense, and it's cool. That's cool. All right, so that's out of the way. That makes me happy that I know the scene now. All right, so here's another scene that also I don't understand, and maybe they didn't do this, but I actually have a shot from the movie right here. And uh, it's during the audition scene where you guys are all lined up and everything, and they say in the movie that there's ten kids auditioning for this, like, you know, these parts in this program, but they only show eight of them. And so there's these two guys who are sitting on the bench, and I drew arrows to them, right? These two guys. And I just want to know, were their scenes filmed or anything? Here, let's take a close look. Oh, um, I don't know. I actually don't know. Because their, huh. name, their names were, are these, is this Steven they, and Austin they, Torres? They went, into the, they went into the wrong room where the video, they're on the couch and the guy says, so is this your first time doing adult modeling? <laughs> um, uh, you know, do you have a boyfriend? No, they, uh, I don't know what happened with them. I don't know. Ah, that's interesting. Cause they're, I think, I think they're, I think they were killed by the government probably. Yeah. Did you actually right. talk to them? Like the people? Like if you said, said hi to them when you were filming? Oh or? yeah. 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 Is, no, we all, we all chatted. Are cool. there, are their names Austin and Steven Torres? Sounds about right. Yeah. Cause they actually like, they're credited as Caliente and Moy Frio and I don't know if their powers were shown or something, but they're, they're credited. I wrote it down, and I don't... Yeah, so that must have been cut, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting, but maybe they... Because, like, you can't... Like, the kids that are shown in the montage, the, the powers can't be worse than, you know, Jupiter the Gas Giant or something like that. Like, I don't... No, know. yeah, I think I think that... I think they, they probably could have been worse. I mean, I think if you give someone enough time, they can think of, like, oh. shittier powers <laughs> than, than that, but... Like, yeah. <laughs> thank, God, thank God it wasn't, you know... But yeah. All right. Was anything uh, improv in the movie? Anything specific? Specific. I mean, Tim Allen's like a master of improv. That guy can just go and go. He's one of those few comedians who, when the camera's not rolling, he's just as funny mm -hmm. um, and just as outgoing. Because so many comedians are really introverted, and they they kind of save it all for the camera, and that's right. that's the thing because that's their outlet. And Tim's just like a hundred miles an hour the entire time. Um, also, a really brilliant guy, just in other ways. I mean, he knows cars really well, but also 
this guy would talk about physics on set, and like he would actually, he wouldn't just like talk about it and say physics. Like he like Go. knew what he was talking about. Well, um, I mean, if this is the time when you were doing two thousand one, a space Odyssey, it probably was fine to talk about that type of stuff with him. Hey, no, he he's just he's such a smart. I can't say that. Like one of the like one of the main reasons I think I like even like like one like one of the main reasons to do this interview too is just to like talk about how awesome Tim Allen is because oh, he really God. is. Um, like, that guy's a treasure. I mean, he is so funny. Um, yeah. And he improvised a lot. Uh, like, it just, you know, the table read took us, like, six hours to do because he could not stop telling jokes. Um, <laughs> and they were all funny, and no one wanted it to stop. Um, mm-hmm. And just really just, like, dirty, dirty stuff. Uh, he's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how long was production for the movie? Was it... Uh, um, a few months, three months, something like that. Yeah. And I also wanted to ask about the final scene where you're battling him, and you guys have the white costumes. Yeah. Were they rushed, or I was just curious enough that was like. We got that at the discount cult store. Um, <laughs> we all had to wear white and go to a quarry and uh, wait for the UFO <laughs> to pick us up. Um, no, I don't know. Uh, I think they were just supposed to be futuristic. Um, I really dug the costumes on that movie. Actually, I think that I think the movie looked cool. That's the thing. I think that movie, like, I think visually there's some really cool stuff. And maybe it was just cooler in person or more impressive when I was 13. But I think like the sets, like in person, were really impressive. Um, but they actually kind of were. I like the um, like some of the designs of like that UFO. Like that was like real. They like they built that thing. You know, they that did? wasn't That's awesome. You know, which I, I I appreciate the fact that some of that stuff was built and it wasn't all green screen. You know, Especially during that um, time where it was like CGI was like basically coming back in and becoming everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was cool just to have like real tangible things for work because it's really boring to act in front of a green screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, act. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, do you still keep in touch with uh, Michael, Kate, and Ryan? Or do you guys just like went your own ways? We, I mean, we don't really keep in touch. I, I think it was such a long time ago. I, I ran into Kate about two years ago. I think mm-hmm. when she was doing House of Cards, uh, we ran into each other at a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael Cassidy, I haven't spoken to that guy in probably since we did the movie, honestly. Um, and then Ryan. And my neighborhood in New York for a long time, too. Um, mm-hmm. Ryan Newman, uh, I have also have not spoken to her in, in a very long time. Interesting. Uh, you know, Tim's probably the guy I've kept in touch with the most, and with him it's just, you know, we run into each other every once in a while uh, in L.A. and talk for 20, 30 minutes, um, cool. and that's pretty casual, um, but no one else really. But I also worked with him for like four or five years. So I guess it's more of a life. connection towards you guys. All right, yeah. so when you first saw the movie, what was your first reactions? I just didn't understand it. I was like... Even <laughs> even as a 13-year-old, you still were like, yeah, what the hell? No, I, because I knew it wasn't what... <sighs> It was just very different than what we shot, you know? And, mm-hmm. I mean, here's the thing. I, like, I'm reluctant to ever, like, really take any movie to ta- – and I know that sounds like such a fucking cop-out, but no one I – don't, I don't think anyone ever goes into a production thinking that they want to make something that's subpar, you know, a bad movie. Um, I think everyone's there kind of thinking, all right, we're going to make this as – you know, good as we can, and, you know, where the script might be lacking, we are going to make up for that with, you know, great acting or great directing or great set design. And where that's lacking, you know, then maybe the script will pick up, you know, if it's the other way around. Um, and I'm not I'm not sure what really happened with that. I, I think it was probably bad timing in a lot of ways because Sky High was also out. And I, I, think I don't know how many kids superhero movies you really need um, in one year. Was, um, I think it was like a year so afterwards. I around that too. It was a yeah. year afterwards. It was 2005, July, I think, was when Sky High came out. This was August 2006. Yeah. And if you noticed recently... Flying around now. Yeah. Uh, and you kind of see that notice, like, Sony's kind of, like, taking those Disney ideas and trying to, like, work... Especially with Emoji Movie and Inside Out. Kind of like those were, like, the similar ideas and they're basically yeah. rushing yeah. a lot. So. Yeah, and I, I don't really know what happened with it, man. I, I just... I don't know. But I remember seeing it and being like... Uh, I don't know, and it, it tanked at the box office, and 
it got really, really bad reviews. Um, I know that, you know, and I, and I kind of was like, I get it. I get it. You know, I get it. Well, you just move on. That's what, you know, you always do. Yeah. I mean, everyone makes a stinker and honestly, I, I consider myself lucky to even have the opportunity to have made, you know, exactly. something not great because it's, it's such a cool job and, uh, such a great experience. Yeah, just be to, to work on movies like that's it's pretty rad. Felt yourself as an actor, and yeah, that, no, that's understandable. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Were there any deleted scenes in the movie, or ones that were crucial that you just remember filming and just got cut out? To tell you the truth, uh, this is going to be such a boring answer. I don't remember. I really don't remember. I mean, I think I think it said everything it needed to say, probably, <laughs> in the final cut. You know, that's interesting. And then uh, I also read you guys did karate for two weeks, and I find it I find it interesting because the, there's only one three second scene where you guys are doing karate in the entire movie, and I'm like, oh, okay, that was that was the only time we see this. You know, you guys were you were wearing like a black belt, and you were saying like one, two, three, and then you can never seen again. Never do anything. When you have a big budget movie like that, uh, they they can spend money to send you to karate school or taekwondo school in this case for right. um, for a few weeks. That was really fun because mm -hmm. uh, those guys were awesome. The the, the taekwondo guys that trained oh, us, um, mm -hmm. they were really great. My dad was with me uh, during pre production and he did a lot of martial arts in the '60s. So obviously, it was really funny to watch him like show off while we were doing it, being like, oh yeah, I know all these katas, and then him doing this with his Bluetooth in, because uh, everyone was wearing the Bluetooth headpieces. Yeah. Uh, back. But I actually have some behind the scenes photos of Taekwondo. I should just send you a bunch of the Zoom photos. That'd be cool. I'm just would... sitting at the computer, <laughs> the behind the scenes stuff. Some of them are kind of cool and weird. <laughs> I totally appreciate that, if you don't mind. Uh, I know. And my final question for this topic is, did you get to keep any souvenirs from the set? No. 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 Nothing. Nah. Okay. Just the memories of my heart. <laughs> and your swim trunks. Which. <laughs> the nuts not trunks. I, I don't understand why everything else, like, comes off as you inflate, but no, those swim trunks had to stay on. It was like, what? <laughs> oh, oh. Plot holes in the movie, hey, right? Even PG. <laughs> All right, yeah. so next is um, some stuff about the business. I just wanted to ask about this. So this is what the question I was hinting at was, I just want to know what was the relationship between you and Tim Allen and why were you in many movies with him? Just, I'm assuming he liked you. Yeah, I mean, totally. I, I think we just, I think we acted pretty well together. Um, I felt really good about all the stuff we did. I mean, even Zoom, like I, he and I just sort of hit it off and we played off each other really well and I, you know, my family's really, really sarcastic, and Tim's sense of humor is really sarcastic, and some people don't get sarcasm. Um, one of the reasons I got along so well with my wife is she's Australian, and they're smart asses, and I like that, you know? Um, and that's kind of how I was raised, and so I, I just, even at that age, I think I got his humor and wasn't like, scared by it, like a, you know, I, I just thought it was funny. It's, he sounded like one of my uncles, you know, just telling dirty jokes and like, yeah. but smart, smart jokes. Um, and we just sort of kept working together. Um, I mean, what we did, but I, I, I don't really know how it worked. I, I, I don't know how that all happened. I think it just... I'm assuming like, when you guys did um, movies or like when he was like casting for movies, like he recommended you for some parts. Like if you like read it and he's like, this guy, I know this guy, you know, because. Well, Shaggy Dog I auditioned for, I mean, Santa Claus 2, that was the first thing we did together. I auditioned for that, booked mm -hmm. that. Shaggy Dog I auditioned for. Um, yeah. And then Santa Claus 2, so you just got called that. Zoom yeah. just did somehow. And, and yes, yeah, Santa Claus 3. Uh, called you back. Reprising the role of Curtis the Elf. So. I don't know. Those, those with a much things. deeper voice as a 14-year-old elf instead of a 10-year-old <laughs> elf. Yeah. So, no, but I, I, I man, that, and that was a great movie, too. I mean, Martin Short, like, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, it's probably great. fun to work with. Um, oh, yeah. Which actors have you got, uh, become really good friends with, like, ones you still talk to to this day? Oh, uh, so, I mean, like, one of, one of my best friends, who is an actor, um, is my buddy Jake Thomas, who, oh, like the, the show me the money thing you did, right? Yep. Oh yeah, show you saw show me the money. There you I go. Did. Um, 
Yeah, so Jake Jake was in that, and he was also in Lucy McGuire for years, and he was in AI, which uh, oh. was a, a Kubrick movie, and yeah. Spielberg, yeah, no, Spielberg, Spielberg died. Over, um, right. Was he, yeah. the, he wasn't the kid who was, like, frozen and came back, and he was, oh, that was yeah. him? That was yeah, him? he was an evil little guy. Um, <laughs> We're going to be Pinocchio. He's not evil he's... in real life. He's a great photographer, a great actor, yeah. um, normal, boring SOB, like me. Mm-hmm. Um and I keep in touch a lot with Robert Bailey Jr. from The Happening. Oh, who's right. my my uh, my BFF in The Happening? Happening. And That's Josh Flitter. Which one? Josh Flitter. Well, best for last is Josh Flitter. Yeah. Who? Have you ever seen? I'm just gonna like list all his credits just right. for his sake, just to really make him blush a bit. Okay. Uh, have you seen Ace Ventura Jr.? I know all of it, but I haven't seen it. Have you seen the greatest game ever played with Shia LaBeouf? Long time ago. Twitter. Long time ago. Oh, was he the, the, the caddy? He is the caddy. Mm-hmm. And he's um, also, like me, a diehard New York Rangers fan. Uh, we're both season ticket holders at the Garden. Um, nice. Diehard Rangers fans. Uh, that's how we reconnected as adults. And... Uh, as a kid, I just remember him like being this nine-year-old kid who dressed to every... We, I would go to a lot of Disney premieres with all the other kids of Probably the will, yeah. era. And he would dress like Tony Soprano in these like, black, tight, kind of turtleneck-y type shirts with a gold chain. Just be like, hey, how's it going? I'm Josh Flitter. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> like, this is like intense. Like, you're going to like break my legs, man. Um, but he's like one of my favorite people. Yeah. Um, you know, so those three guys, Jonathan with Mickey. Oh, yeah, from Jerry Maguire. Because he was in that yeah. video, too. Yeah. Uh, there are Grace Phipps from Some Kind of Hate. Do you still talk with uh, Dakota Fanning? Or huh? no? Dakota Fanning from Town of Hatter now? We really. have not seen each other in a very long time. Uh, last time I saw her was about six, seven years ago. Wow. Uh, on the street, I drove by her and Paul there was like, yo, what's up? And she was like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. All right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think this is one I my friends kind of want me to ask you is uh, what was it like working with Mr. Mike Myers? Oh, it was great. Probably was, um, yeah. I was a die. I mean, I was a ten year old boy, so I was obviously a diehard Austin Powers fan. Austin Powers, was great. Um, Austin Powers was great. Yeah, that guy's that guy's a class act, man. I got sick a bunch of times during the filming of that movie. You got like, your, I had my appendix taken out. Signed jersey, right? He sent me a signed jersey. Yeah, Wayne I saw, I saw the interview. Yeah. Um, and, like, for a guy, like, a big star like that, just remembering, like, what some dumb 10-year-old says about a football player he likes. And then months later, like, like that that's just really cool. Um, Who's the football player again? Was it? Wayne Krabet. From? New York Jets. Mm. Right. My favorite, my favorite Jet of all time, next to Curtis Martin. Uh, my favorite wide receiver, maybe one of my favorite wide receivers of all time, a walk-on. Undrafted player. I was, gonna, I was just gonna make a joke. Why not Mark Sanchez? No. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, yeah, Mark Sanchez. I'm, I do crazy football yeah, and all that up. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, so here's my. He just did two championship games in a row. All right. You know. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Now, I'm. I'm just. Just gonna adjust. This is. That. This is great. I like this. This is. There we go. All right. <laughs> so why did you want to pursue music with um, Labor Day? And what is it something you always were interested in? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I've been singing since I was a kid. Not like in any real, like I've never done musical theater or anything like that. Uh, just mm-hmm. singing a lot. My, my family's pretty musical. My dad sang doo-wop a lot on um, street oh, yes. corners back in New York in the 50s. He was one of those obnoxious guys, I can imagine, in leather jackets going, What's that you know, story? by a bastion that's on fire or something. Um, and my mom's a great singer, too. Well, my sister sings. Sister was in, uh, what's it called? Janny Jones. And then Ryan, of course, is Ryan's... Is Ryan in Charlie and Chocolate Factory right now? Is that what he is in? I can't remember. Hmm. I, what's on the show he's doing now, Ryan Breslin? Oh, uh, why am I spacing out right now? Is he doing Charlie and Chocolate Factory? I thought that was what it was last I read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, mm-hmm. the, that is, yeah. I just listened Sorry. to that soundtrack for the first time the other day, and I was like, Okay. <laughs> I mean, um, it's, it's my opinion, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know, I just got into music, I just started playing. And uh, I met, uh, the guy who produced Labor Day is a guy named James William Hindle, who's mm-hmm. English musician, really talented. Um, and he just sort of, like, he actually loved the movie Zoom. 
So you might want to track him down to ask him why. Um, oh, really? I think but uh, he sort of uh, just took me under his wing and was a great mentor to me and mm -hmm. still is. Um, yeah. And wouldn't get annoyed when I sent him every shitty song that I wrote. And then we eventually ended up making that record together. And mm -hmm. Now I play in another band and I played in a lot of different it's good Random to go around. Groups. Good to go around, meet people. That's yeah. you know, <laughs> hey, you need to get contacts and everything. That's the whole thing about the business, I think. Um, for Labor Day, you had a thing with Jesse Eisenberg in it. Was that recorded, or did you like you meet him, or what was what was the whole thing with Jesse Eisenberg? Uh, I've always been a big fan of his. He worked on Zombieland with my sister, oh, and right, yeah. he and I became kind of pals when. She was doing that because I spent some time in Atlanta when they were filming. I spent a couple weeks down there. Um, mm -hmm. And I just like, I really liked him as an actor. I really like his voice really and good. his manner. I think he's just so cool and so smart and talented. Um, and I thought it would be funny, like, because I wrote that, like, that whole spoke, I, I haven't thought about that record in a long time, but that spoken word piece he did. Um, since no one's dying to know anyway, I'll just give up the secret. Um, like, I was trying to make it as ridiculously dark and twisted as possible, just as a joke, because mm -hmm. it's just rambling. It doesn't make any sense. Um, I thought Jesse would be perfect for it. And I asked him if he'd do it, and he said, oh, uh, do you mind if I just record it on GarageBand and send it to you? I'm, like, in Boston making this movie about Facebook. So, like, I was <laughs> like, yeah, sure. And <laughs> We put it on the record, and it was really cool. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I think it's like the highest rated track from the album on <laughs> Amazon or iTunes or one of those Something sites. Like uh, and it's a good track for it, you know? Yeah, I was just like, I was listening to it going like, I felt like it was maybe like a, like a sound bite from a movie or something like that, but I just wanted to know, like, was that was, the joke. It was I was him. just trying to mess with people and make them think I was dark and twisted. <laughs> you know. Edgy. Uh... So Those big, big time edgy kid. Yeah. Here's an interesting thing. So the show me the money thing you were in, you were talking mm -hmm. about how you really badly want to continue acting. Is that real? Like, do you still like acting? You still like one of? Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, I too. Right. Of course. That movie was obviously just like an exaggerated version of reality. Yeah, and yeah but not and, based in reality really at all. But uh, yeah, no, I still I love acting. Yeah, I've been be working. Fortunate. I've been collaborating with this filmmaker in New York a lot named Sebastian Summer, who's done a lot of really cool like. If you haven't seen that guy's work, like get on it now because he's gonna be huge. Like, the, he's gonna be he's gonna be huge. Exactly, he's gonna be the next big uh, so I mean, next big actor. I mean, he's he's hysterical. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. Something that um, I mean later. I'll totally look it up. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're working on something right now that's kind of secret. Ooh, so, good. All right, so stay. return to the big screen for Chris Rith. That makes me happy. Return of the, the return, return yeah. of the man. I, I that's that's awesome. That's I, I, now I'm anticipating yeah. that. Return to the swim trunks. Yeah, no, <laughs> you kept it. It's it's, it's there. No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be hilarious. All right, so I don't know uh, if you still want to talk after this, but this is my final question that I have, and it's just simply what is next. What do you just more albums? I mean, I always say the movie you said, but like, I'm assuming you're yeah. working on a lot of stuff for like bands and stuff, right? Yeah, so I uh, we're working on that film. That film's actually done right now. It's uh, in post production, and he's tinkering away at it in his little mad scientist lab. Um, mm -hmm. uh, my band, Cheap Protection, is putting out a record pretty soon. We're finishing it up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also producing for a couple different bands with some cool projects that'll be yeah. hopefully yeah. popping up pretty soon. Right. Um, I'm having a lot of fun doing that. Sweet. And, yeah, just doing that. And, and I don't know if this is maybe crossing the line in terms of a question, but I was just like, anything with Grace? I was talking like, like possible kids with Grace or something like that? Or, I, don't uh, I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't, I didn't want to like, you know, well, go yeah. invade this personal space. I just want to make sure. That's okay. I mean, yeah. Awesome. We'll see. We'll see. All right, and that's about all the questions I have for you as of now. Um, but that's, I guess that's it. Thank you once again. This makes me super happy you did this. Uh, I will try and get everything filmed, and we'll see where it goes. But thank you once again. Hey, thank you so much, dude. Beautiful. Don't look back, the path is